popularity in the 60s by Bruce Lee. Kung Fu, the way of the warrior. is a way of life for many Chinese people. It provides entertainment, exercise and religion. For some, it also provides a living. These two young men are film actors in Hong Kong. They are planning the choreography of a fight they will perform in a Kung Fu film. Their teacher, Master Chan, supervises to make certain that in their search for excitement, they remember the strict tradition of the art. However spectacular the action, it must conform to what the Chinese audience recognizes as good Kung Fu. The use of fighting techniques as entertainment has always been part of the tradition of Kung Fu. The spectacular battles of the Chinese opera made an easy transition into the Kung Fu films for which the Hong Kong cinema is famous. The Chinese audiences understand the differences between techniques and are excited by the skill of the performers. The fight sequences are like ballets. The aim is not just for the hero to win, but for him to defeat his opponent with elegance. Only Kung Fu students may perform the lion dance. This dance has been a part of every Chinese celebration for centuries. Even in sophisticated Hong Kong, the custom is still very strong. No shop can be opened or building completed without the lion and his orchestra to bring good luck and cast a favorable atmosphere over the event. On this occasion, the dance was performed on a local police station's fate day. The lion is cautious, suspicious of the crowds. It has to feel safe before it can eat an offering of green food, usually a lettuce. Beneath the lion's head, tossing the lettuce into its mouth with his feet, is a senior student of Kung Fu. He is the leading performer of the dance in his master's Kung Fu school. The school charges a fee to perform the lion dance, and the money is shared out among the students. The schools that have lions which are known to be lucky, and that perform well, can earn useful amounts. The reputation of the master of a kung fu school depends partly on the quality of his students' lion dance. It's the custom for masters to delegate much of the teaching to the senior students, but Master Chan enjoys involving himself in it. It is a long and complex dance. Each movement of the dancer controls different parts of the lion. The dance is designed so that when the mask is placed over the dancer, his personality vanishes and all his actions bring the lion to life. <laughs>
Although Kung Fu appears to be fundamentally a Chinese activity, there is an important Indian aspect to it. It's from India that the religion of Kung Fu came, and perhaps some of its fighting techniques. From about 400 BC, the ancient roads between India and China were used by Buddhist monks. Some of the Chinese monks found their way to this historic city of Kanchipuram in South India, and one of them is carved into stone in a 7th century temple. On the wall beside him are carvings of figures in fighting postures, probably the oldest detailed records of martial arts that exist. The kings of Kanchipuram held the Chinese monks in high honour, and a 6th century king built a line of pagodas in front of this temple as a memorial to a Chinese monk who was his friend. The journeys were not all one way. It is probably from this same city that an Indian prince set out to travel to China. He is now known as Bodhidharma, the founder of Zen Buddhism. He is revered by martial artists, and throughout China and Japan his portrait hangs in the training halls. The legends say that he travelled by sea and land into the heart of China, to a Buddhist temple built in a huge valley under the mountain that the Chinese think is at the centre of their country. Shaolin Temple is now mostly ruined, but it does contain large frescoes painted in the 18th century that give an idealised picture of Chinese and Indian monks practising martial arts together. Bodhidharma is given the credit for encouraging the monks to learn martial arts. He thought that in their untrained state, they were unhealthy and lacked the strength to meditate. However it came about, there is no doubt that this mixture of fighting and Buddhism is of major importance in the martial arts today. Then, as now, men learnt destructive fighting skills balanced by the peaceful morality of Buddhism. For much of the time, the monks were able to live in peace, but at least twice they fought to help emperors to the throne of China. Many times they were closed down by emperors who feared their fighting skills. Each time that happened, they went underground and spread throughout China. From China, the art of Kung Fu has travelled to Chinese communities throughout the world. The techniques are still practised in mainland China to a high standard. However, it's in the Chinese communities outside the mainland, like Hong Kong, that the full range of traditional activities still exist. Some of these are associated with the triads, the secret Kung Fu societies that organize criminal activities, protection rackets, prostitution and drug smuggling. Of course, this is not true of all Kung Fu masters. Master Chan is an upright member of the Chinese community, highly respected for his charitable activities. He hasn't missed a Rotary Club meeting for 20 years. Like so many Chinese, he starts his day exercising to receive the benefit of qi, the life-giving energy of the world that they believe is especially concentrated under trees in the early morning. He came to Hong Kong from South China about 60 years ago and learnt Kung Fu when he arrived. He is typical of the best of his generation of masters. He starts his day at about five, always exercising in the same place. He returns to his surgery and opens for business at about six. There are always likely to be patients who damage themselves during the night and who need repairing before they go to work. The shops around him don't open until about 10. Master Chan is famous for his skill as a bone setter and his ability to ease painful backs and soothe bruises. His surgery is a typical Chinese room, cluttered with the souvenirs of a lifetime. <laughs> From here, he maintains a constant telephone link with his friends throughout the colony. Since he's lived in Hong Kong for so long, he knows everybody. 
His influence is much greater than his apparent status. The training hall of his school is beside his surgery. It has all the normal equipment found in a Kung Fu school, including the dummy man, who is attacked by all the students in turn. This is the school's most senior student of Kung Fu, who also works as an assistant with the patients. So he's studying the complete tradition. As well as him, there are always several non-fighting students working with Master Chan to learn medicine. Chinese people are always anxious about the after effects of even minor bruises and sprains. They believe that if such injuries are left untreated, they will cause worse trouble in the future. Master Chan's medical techniques are those of traditional Chinese medicine. He uses warm poultices and oils made from about 50 ingredients. Several large businesses and banks retain him to look after their staff. The basic moves of Kung Fu are the same for all the systems. But one of the problems of studying the art is the proliferation of different styles. There are several hundred named schools known to exist. Master Chan belongs to the Hung Quen school, okay. the style that teaches the traditionally elaborate techniques. Most of the older styles of Kung Fu have many weapons techniques, often using military weapons. They are a reminder of the days when martial arts schools were the centers of rebellion against the usurping Qing emperors of China. From 1600 onwards, the secret Kung Fu societies organized rebellions that lasted for years and tied down huge armies. It's these revolutionary societies that have dwindled to the triads. In today's weapons training, there are many decorative flourishes which have no combat use but they instill confidence in handling the weapon and intimidate opponents. The exercises are not all decoration. These upward cuts are designed to attack the softest parts of the body from the angle least protected by armor. Master Chan feels that Kung Fu is bound to lose students to the more organized fighting arts and that the traditional ways of teaching are inadequate for the modern world. Master Chan 
叫做教练 coach。个理由点呢？佢认为我家学嘢呢，就学你嘅，我俾银子你，你就要教翻嗰首套嚟俾我，就唔系话尊重尊师重道呢，冇教士咁紧要。一锤一脚，原来 traditional Chinese teaching is very informal. Students wander in and out of the training hall and practice as they will. The master instructs when he feels like it, or leaves it to the students to train one another. Master Chan teaches much more than many masters. There is no profit in kung fu for Master Chan. His training hall takes up valuable floor space at expensive Hong Kong prices. He recoups his losses by business acumen. He rents the whole ground floor of this building and runs several businesses in it. On the street, there's a prepared food shop and a tobacconist. Behind, there's the tailors. This was the first trade that he learned when he arrived in Hong Kong about 60 years ago. He has three children, a daughter and two sons. One is a surgeon practicing in New York. The other runs a travel business, neatly fitted into the gap beside the tailors and behind the food shop. Essentially, Master Chan sees the perpetuation of kung fu as one of his duties to the Chinese community. In most kung fu styles, there are many long, elaborate forms to study. The long sequences of fighting moves include sections which take their names from five animals or the five elements. Wow! These long set forms are a point of dispute amongst those who study kung fu. The critics say that they are more of a dance than a preparation for fighting. Those who believe in them say that they teach concentration and stamina, and above all, that these forms contain the spirit of kung fu. It is a hard external art, the opposite of the soft internal arts like tai chi. In kung fu, the energy comes from the tension that is held in the chest muscles. In Chinese terms, the body's chi is raised from the stomach to the chest. There are even sections where he has to pretend to be drunk to deceive an attacker for a moment. Yo 一扣打一扣一打一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一扣一
，就好活泼嘅。一笪落嚟嘅时候呢，一飙，即系抢眼，多数呢就挖眼珠嘅，就射嘢。龙蛇虎咧，虎咧即系等于头先我讲相互走啊！炮呢就凶猛嘅喎、哦，使插锤啊！即系用嗰度插炮锤呢，就系即系仲凶猛过嗰个虎虎形。学呢即系等于虎学完呢，跨锤，将一锤，跳脚，跳，系嘛？系嘛？脚底全分埋咗啊！上嘛？一锤，有，点解？扎实起嚟嘅。